The second one, institutional reforms, starting first in particular with the election commission, is there too. At least that has been done. And in creating an equitable mechanism to transfer money. All parties, I don't care, and I'm sure you will agree with me for saying this, we don't care which party we are talking about. All parties, if they have support required, it is a legitimate right that they should have access to money so that they can do their work. They have shown they have support. Even if you don't like it, I'm sorry, you have to do it. This is a democracy, after all. <laughs> so the areas requiring reform, there's a lot of work to be done. The federal constitution, there will be reforms required there. The election of pensions act, reforms are required there. The society act, it's all here. As, as I said, I don't want to go into the details because it's going to bore you out of your mind. It's very technical. But the second part also, institutional reforms. Election commission is one. The registrar of societies. Isn't the registrar of societies requiring reform? You saw what happened before the election. <laughs> How can the registrar of societies be under a sitting minister? The thing about registering parties should be to an independent body, and that should be the EC, and the EC should be independent. And then we have the Attorney General's chamber, very important, the issue of corruption. And here, I'm glad Cynthia is here, because on issues of corruption, and you getting the continue to practice this kind of monetized politics in our election. I keep coming back to this point, eh, because as I said, that's the issue also we really need to look at, because for all the reforms that are going to transpire in the future, will parties allow us to know what is happening within the parties during the elections? And I'm saying yes. Some will say no, fine, let's debate. But I would like our parties to be truly open and accountable. So here we come to the political party set. And here I'm giving you some more background on terms of legislations, the issues we have to go through. It's a lot of tedious work. And I heard that the government is doing it good. They're doing it, but these are the reforms that are required. It's also the Federal Constitution, the Election Commissions Act, the Election Offenses Act, the Elections Act, the Societies Act, the Companies Act. Why the Companies Act? Because political parties own business. Also, when we come to company sec, under the company sec, is there any regulation on financing or donations to parties? Other countries have it. The United Kingdom has it. Parties who contribute funds to companies that contribute fund, contribute companies that contribute funds to parties must declare it to their shareholders, and their shareholders must approve it. Isn't that fair? That's very fair. That even uh, within ideas, despite the fact that you know it was an organization that uh, I built for for uh, almost eight years that I worked there, uh, ideas itself had to distance themselves from me as soon as I left. And all this is really understandable, but it's also painful to see, uh, you know, because you suddenly realize that you have worked for the last eight years, and suddenly, oh no, they're saying, oh, that's your choice. Uh, you know, have nothing to do with you. But that's the reality of Malaysian politics. You take a big risk by joining a non-mainstream uh, uh, party, especially on the opposition side, on Pakatan Harapan at that time. And the vindictiveness of AMNO and Barisan National that has been perpetuated for so long, and especially ah. Abdul Najib, this vindictiveness of AMNO and Barisan National made the recipient, people like me, and the donors really uh, cautious about disclosing who is funding your political work.